Well, we've got Congressman Ron Paul for the next 20 minutes, and I know he's the hardest working person in Congress. And uh, I feel a little guilty taking his time up, but uh, he's got so much important information, and I know our audience is always chomping at the bit whenever he uh, joins us, normally every month, but now every couple of months because he's so busy. And I've got a whole cornucopia of things to cover here, the wars, the constitutional crisis, the TSA, the dirty tricks the media has been running on Ron Paul. And he's a, he's a good sportsman, so he never really talks about it, but I think it needs to be uh, discussed. But obviously he's a presidential candidate. He's the only candidate that is a constitutionalist and that has the solutions to help get this country on the right track. All the others are rhinos or globalists or neocons, and we've got to get behind Ron Paul. But thank God he ran for president because by running, he's injecting real issues. We've got him for the next 20 minutes, and then he's gone. Uh, sir, there's so much to cover, but the Financial Times says the dollar is seen losing global reserve status. The bankers are engaged in economic terrorism in Greece. Uh, now they're saying it's going to spread here. Uh, the recession never ended. Uh, you've been proven right again, sir. What can you say, because you're on the banking committees, what can you say about the state of the world economy right now? Well, I think it's sick and getting thicker. I did read one article you probably saw today. They said that the dollar, the reserve standard, as the reserve standard of the world, will be coming to an end. Then they added within 25 years, I would uh, suggest that uh, it's going to come much sooner. I just don't believe it will last for 25 years where it will be the dominant reserve currency of the world. The big problem, though, is uh, who's going to pick up the pieces? They're getting together and they're trying to have another international paper currency put together, but then they throw out a few tidbits and say, well, maybe we ought to put a little bit of uh, gold into that as well. But uh, the, the, um, the problems we have are, are really very overwhelming. They cannot sustain this. So uh, I would say that it's not going to be 25 years, but I don't know, you know, nobody knows exactly the date. But it could come sooner, a lot sooner. It could come a year or two or who knows when. depends on what event might arise. But these, the, the problem they face is the one that we face in trying to figure it out is the dollar is ter a terrible currency. But when you compare it to the euro that has to bail out the Greek economy, you know, all of a sudden people, people look to us because traditionally we've been so strong economically and militarily. They say, well, at least we can park our money in treasury bills, you know, for another month or two or three. Someday they're going to run out of this and the momentum will be against the dollar. And uh, not too many years ago, the dollar got in big trouble and we had to go beg into the IMF. And that was in 79 and 80. Uh, people thought it would be they'd lose control. But uh, the time is coming, and that will be a much bigger event than we've just experienced, you know, uh, from 08 up until now, and the, the current crisis that we're in the middle of, because I think it'll just drive us that much deeper into an economic crisis. Well, the Chinese, as you know, just two weeks ago said the United States is already technically defaulted. The Federal Reserve is buying most of the T-bills. And for the average layman out there, they're like, why does that concern me? Well, that's the faith and credit of the United States, and, and that's a tactic I've seen where they'll say 10 years, 25, on something that's going to happen to introduce the idea to you so you accept it but don't panic. A lot of the experts I read and uh, who've been accurate in the past, they say two, three years, but then they point out it's a global concerted devaluation, so it's not even that the dollar is going to lose its reserve, it's just going to lose its value. That's right, and, you know, they, they, they're trying to frighten the members of Congress into you know, voting to raise the debt limit like they did about the bailout. You know, the end of the world will come. Uh, there will be a default. But the default is, I mean, our country is known for default. I mean, all the way back to the Civil War period, they defaulted on, on promising to pay gold. We did it in the 30s with Roosevelt. Then we did it to all foreigners in 1971. We just say, well, no, yes, we promised you uh, an ounce of gold for $35, but we're not going to do it anymore. So... And even now, they, they keep saying, well, you have to raise it because we don't want to default on the debt. But if prices are going up for the average person, which they are, and they're probably going up uh, 5 to 10 percent at least at the minimum, uh, somebody's defaulting constantly. That means they're losing 10 cents on the, on the dollar every year. And it'll get much worse. So that is the default. But that's the deception. Matter of fact, it's deliberate policy because they know what we know. They know that debt can't be paid. There's no way they can meet their this. There's not enough people working to pay off the debt. But the private central banks, they get first use 
on the money, and so they're more than happy. And as we get more bankrupt, they're going to be there loaning us whatever the new currency system is in the future. So they come out on top with their new vaunted bank of the world that George Soros says is going to save us. Yeah, and they and they pay zero percent interest on it, and then they buy some of this government debt and do these kind of things, and and they make two, three, four percent. But you know, if you're retired and, and think you have this obligation to take care of yourself and say, well, I'm going to have a CD because I can't trust the, you know the stocks or anything else, they get cheated because they make essentially nothing on their on their savings, and then they have to pay taxes on it. Then they wonder why the people don't take better care of themselves, you know. But it's a deeply flawed system. It's a deeply flawed system of money and the welfareism and central economic planning through the Federal Reserve. It's all deeply flawed, and uh, though many of us have talked about this for many, many years, uh, it's coming to fruition, and most people are realizing it. It's also the reason that especially the young people are realizing how much they're being dumped on, and I know you reach a lot of young people as well, talking to how they're getting ripped off. Uh, because uh, there's not, and there's no way. Even if they could get a good job, they can't pay off these obligations. But they're not getting really good jobs. So we are really, really facing a major problem, and it has to be a dollar Absolutely. crisis coming in our in our future. Well, what about Bernanke last week saying he's puzzled that the economy isn't getting better? You, with total precision, have predicted exactly what would happen because it's sound laws of economics. Uh, Bernanke knows full well, as you just said. They know what they're doing and, and, and telling us we're not in a recession. I mean, that's another lie. Congressman, uh, shifting gears into the campaign, uh, you are the only candidate you know, d decades ago telling the truth about issues. Now in the presidential race, the only one... Uh, who's telling the truth and who has the track record to be trusted, Mitt Romney, uh, you know, who helped write what became Obamacare, uh, the rest of them. I mean, this is a, a pack of people uh, who are, are just completely unqualified at this point. Uh, we've got uh, CNN uh, ignoring their own polls and running uh, Internet polls with 54 people and then showing you for zero when their own polls show that you won. You're winning most of the straw polls, second New Hampshire. I hear mainline conservative radio talking about Republican candidates. They won't even mention you, despite the fact that you're right there in the top three candidates. Uh, that shows that the system is scared of you. What can you say to the dirty tricks uh, that they've been uh, trying to pull on you? I don't think you could stop them. I mean, they're, they have too much power and control because they own the media and they own a lot of these outlets. So talking to people like you that will get the truth out, but also the Internet is a good way to do this. But as bad as the system is, it still operates reasonably well. That is that, you know, over the years I've been able to run for Congress and get elected. And now I am still able to compete even up against these odds and, and these tricks. Because, you know, we can get in and organize, and our numbers are growing. We're able to raise the money that is necessary, and we continue to do that. As long as, as, long as we keep adding volunteers and able to raise the money, we are going to compete. But obviously it is more difficult because there's still a large number of people, if not even the majority, get their information from the evening news, the ordinary news, and from their politicians. And if, uh, if they can discredit you, you don't get credibility. And last go-around... You know, the first two major debates, one right before uh, Iowa and one before New Hampshire, you know, they excluded me from the debates. This year, they're not going to be able to do it. So that we, we have made progress, and that's been because there's a growing number of people who are on to their tricks and are watching them rather closely, and they're going to hear from, from the supporters if they start doing that. So uh, in spite of the obstacles, our job is to keep doing what we're doing and, and just gain supporters. Well, I want to talk about some of the things on the positive front and, and specifically the websites and how people need to get involved now. But you, at the start of the race last time, weren't even in the top ten. Then you were in the top four or five. Now, out of the gates, you're winning most of the straw polls. You've won the big coveted CPAC two years in a row. So Fox cuts to a year-old clip of you being booed. I mean, all sorts of tricks. I mean, it is, it is showing that they're scared of you, showing you are viable. Uh, the, the new talking point is you're not viable and that you're fighting for credibility, uh, which, again, is just a pure hoax 
if you just look at the polls and the numbers, they are horrified of you. And we have Jim Tucker and others that have given us sterling intel from inside Bilderberg the last five years running. You are discussed every year. And they say even if Ron Paul doesn't win, it's, it's the third rail in colleges now, not liberalism or fake conservatism, uh, but, you know, true freedom. Um, uh, you're in the debates. You're exposing the imperial presidency. You're exposing the, the dollar devaluation. I mean, they... They are like vampires to a, a cross, and Ron Paul is the cross. They, they are scared of you. Well, uh, I don't know how scared they are. I think they do have concern, but, uh, you know, the one place where we uh, think they're revealing that we, we our side, is making progress is they're starting to support some of our positions, whether it's, you know, backing off on some of this warmongering stuff and uh, saying some things about auditing the Fed. So we're making that progress. And what they believe is that if they just appeal or neutralize that a little bit and they can get elected, one of them get elected that supports the same policies, they don't have to follow through with the policy. So they recognize our views are popular, but they also know that you can say a lot of things in campaign, and as long as we elect you know, their particular kind of people, they don't have to follow through on their, uh, their promises. Well, that was my next point. Uh, while they're attacking you and, 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 and you know, saying that you're weak when you're the opposite, it, they're all, even mainstream media admits that suddenly the entire Republican field is acting and talking like Ron Paul. So when they can't beat you, they, they try to counterfeit you. Yeah, and they, they certainly wouldn't say, well, you know, uh, he has a good point there or there, but uh, the the rude li laughing and the ridicule, uh, I, I think that's going to go away. So far it's gone away, and I don't know whether they'll go back to that or not. So th there's reason for us to say there's a good reason to keep doing exactly what we're doing and using what is available to us, uh, you know, which radio shows and which uh, Internet programs and there's, there's just a lot available to us. It's not like when there were just three major networks and hardly anybody on talk radio that would, you know, defend our position. So, so that's where, you know, I'm optimistic. But on the short run, there are days when I think about the overwhelming problems we face. And, you know, we're just starting to see what happens when the government can't come through, you know, like in places like Greece where the promises can't be fulfilled. People get angry. And that'll be, that's going to be happening here, too. Well, you, there's a good chance you're going to become president, but regardless, we've got to supercharge your campaign so you can be at the you know, very forefront the entire time injecting real issues so that as the implosion comes in the future, people will know what you said and our movement for liberty with you as a focal point will be that much bigger and stronger to offer real solutions and we'll end up having a president uh, poll one way or the other. So folks need to have a long-term vision. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. We have to have a long-term uh, plan because nothing happens overnight. And uh, uh, if you had asked me five years ago how far along we would be uh, in this effort, I would have not been very optimistic that we could have achieved what we have so far. So th things are moving, but we, it, it means that we still have a long way to go, too. And there's lots of for grabs. And, and when people lose power, they can get pretty, pretty nasty because they do not want to give up that power. And the people who control the money and the system and the appropriations process and the international affairs and, and all these things, they will not go away quietly. Uh, they will be, uh, you know, pr pretty determined to cling to their power. Kicking and screaming. All right, we've only got four or five minutes left running through these quick questions. Uh, I was surprised to see Congressman Nadler, big Democrat, come out and say Obama is becoming an emperor. Uh, just as you said weeks ago, the last nail in the republic's coffin, if Congress lets the president not even consult Congress and say, my authority comes from the U.N., quote, I've done this for the, for the legitimacy uh, of the U.N. I mean, sir, is that not seditious? Is that not treason? Is it not impeachable uh, what President Obama has done with this, with this whole Libya thing, uh, and, and now they're getting the ground invasion ready? Oh, sure. And in a different age, uh, it would have been impeachable and it would have probably followed through. But up until recent years, they've either gotten permission or token permission. But it's, uh, it's been bad for a while. Truman certainly did not do anything to notify Congress. He just marched in under U.N., uh, you know, into Korea. 
and uh, they got token permission, you know, for Vietnam and these other events. But once again, uh, Bosnia, Bosnia was no permission, no consultation, and this is the same way in Libya.